I brought more soldiers than you did. All right, y'all. This is part two of my take on sincerity that is required in media, that is required in storytelling. Because without sincerity, the immersion is definitely non-existent. Without sincerity, the lessons that could be found in the story, unfortunately, would be overlooked and you would forget whatever lesson was in there. An example of that is the new Deadpool movie. It was extremely insincere. And when it tried to be, you just could not get into it because of all the jokes and fourth wall breaking every other five seconds. So it destroyed the seriousness of it. So here is a video I found about this guy's take on sincerity as well. And he started off, he's a young guy, he started off realizing there's a lack of sincerity in Hollywood and modern storytelling after he had watched the original Lord of the Rings movies, right? And here he shares his opinion and his experience of watching it. Then he gives some other examples. So we're going to go through that. Also, we're going to look at some examples of sincere storytelling, right? And I'm going to be um, looking at this manga called The Climber. And I'm going to do a video on it because I just finished reading the whole thing yesterday. But we're just going to look at a few pages and um, we're going to see what makes this one so sincere. We're going to see um, this little movie called X created by that manga cup group Clamp. I think they called Clamp. Uh, it was an all female group and they used to do manga. I don't know where they are now. And one of their series got a movie called X. We're gonna look at the sincerity of that. Um, and then we're gonna look at some of the dudes I follow, um, guys I know, friends of mine, I follow on Instagram, and we're gonna examine what makes their work so sincere. What makes Gregory's work here so sincere? Because if you look at Greg's work and you actually look at the work of this manga, manga artist, the difference in style, difference in art level might be very well be evident to you. But one thing that you should pick up immediately when you look at his stuff and his stuff is that both of them have the same tone. Both of them have the same sincerity. And then we're going to look at my disciples work, right? Maxwell over here, and he is going to enter into the one shot program and his style is obviously hardcore shonen but also if you pay attention his his style also has a lot of sincerity his art i should say has a lot of sincerity to it so we're going to look at why and then we're going to look at dd mark's style dd mark's art and examine why his is insincere because dd mark truly is an insincere artist. He might be a good artist, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's insincere. It doesn't matter if you treat your art as a vehicle for you to become a millionaire, as a vehicle for you to become a financially successful individual. We can see it, right? It only then resembles the hustle and bustle of Wall Street it doesn't resemble somebody who has something to say, somebody who has been going through life, right? So let's start with um, this video over here and what this guy says. Actually untouchable 20 years on. For some reason, I missed out on these movies throughout my childhood. I don't know why. It just never occurred to me that I should watch them. So by the time I did eventually sit down to view the trilogy, I think I was 17 and by then was very much accustomed to the cynical, self-aware, ironic style of storytelling which had grown throughout the 2010s. The cynical, self-aware storytelling style that has grown since the 2010s. This is the majority of all the stories we see in Hollywood, even in modern games, right? It's as if the characters cannot just be locked into the script. They have to break the script. They have to break character to remind you that you're watching a movie. And this breaks the immersion. 
And this is a bad thing because it creates and engineers a generation of people who cannot, who cannot expect anything to be serious. Even in serious moments, there must be a joke. And if everything is a joke, you'll never know what's worth uh, sacrificing something for. You'll never know what's actually meaningful. You'll always have this deep frustration in you of you want something to mean something, but nothing ever does. Everyone just giggles at everything, right? The seriousness of pursuing meaning is scoffed at, laughed at. You call it an idiot, a freak, if you're trying to do something like that. If you're trying to pursue something like that, you'll be laughed at. And people who are living this way, right? They are the hunchbacks. They are the ones who can't take anything seriously. They are the ones who will want to completely destroy anyone who's actually serious about their craft. As we see with all the hunchbacks on YouTube trying to destroy coffee comics and so on ends to dominate movies and to a lesser extent television as well. Now to this day I'm pretty ashamed by what I'm about to tell you but anyway. Fellowship of the Ring begins, we hear Kate Blanchett's narration and I'm thinking okay this is pretty cool. It's a bit overly serious but... It's a bit overly serious. You see I have I had wondered a while ago as to like why these Dumb asses, right? Why do they think I'm angry all the time? Why do they think I'm angry? It, it makes sense now. I was never angry unless I made it clear that, yeah, I'm angry in this video. Um, I was just being serious. And the people took my seriousness as anger. And then they get triggered. They get triggered because I'm serious. Because they are unserious. Why is this guy so serious? That is the mentality of savages in the jungle here. When you dedicate yourself to something and you don't want to go to the liquor store with the rest of the idiots, they're going to look at you like, what, you think you're better than us? Why don't you want to go to the liquor store, man? We want to go get wasted. What's wrong with you? Are you gay or something? Are you stupid? You see what I'm saying? So it's very interesting. This video has some gold nuggets. And I think every unserious hunchback degenerate freak should watch this video 10 times over so you can realize that this is you, that you have been socially engineered. You've been socially engineered to take everything as a damn joke. And that makes you a infantile minded individual, even though you might be 40 years old, right? Whatever. And we get to the bit with Sauron, and we see this villain who kind of looks like he's from Power Rangers, and Galadriel is talking about a place called Mount Doom. So obviously I brace myself for the joke, for the moment where this ridiculous tension is broken. And it just doesn't come. So I- mm -hmm. Man, that, that was very important. A lot of people hear something like, Mount Doom, haha, <laughs> that sounds so ridiculous. Waiting for the punchline. It doesn't come. So wait, what? There's no punchline. I'm, I'm waiting for it. Nothing. There, there's no scoffing. There's no mocking. There's no laughing. What's going on? You see? And I'm sure that was the reaction of most hunchbacks when they heard that I'm not making a joke. I'm not playing around. I mean what I say. I've said that a trillion times that you've got to mean what you say and say what you mean. I think, fine, that was the prologue, whatever. You can't really make jokes in the prologue. Then we get the whole Shire sequence, and I see all these little guys running around the place, smoking weed and making these weird faces. It all feels rather camp, rather silly, especially once the wizard in the pointy hat arrives, and so once again, I brace myself for the self-referential joke, for the film to acknowledge how bizarre this all is. And once again, no such joke occurs. And this basically happens for the entire trilogy. Like, you think I would have gotten used to the tone after a few scenes, but no. My brain had but no. been so molded over time by so much postmodern wink wink nudge nudge storytelling that it- Exactly. See, this guy confesses that he was brainwashed for a long time thanks to the postmodernist garbage, right? And 
how is it that these other hunchbacks don't want to admit that? Why? I suppose it's because it's so... It takes a, a, an adult's mind to actually function in reality and look at things in a serious manner, right? So, of course, they don't want to do that. But ultimately, it was really nice to see the dude confessing that, hey, I was brainwashed. And it took a while to get used to this. It could just not recognize sincerity. Now, let's actually stop for a second and think about how crazy that is. Because sincerity is not some outlandish storytelling device, only used by those daring few writers and directors. No, sincerity, since the dawn of time, has been the very essence of storytelling itself. Like, imagine having this conversation with someone even 50 years ago. They probably wouldn't even understand what you were talking about. For millennia, stories were told to convey truths, to share human experiences, to evoke genuine- Stories were told to share human experiences. You see, The Climber, this manga here, is based off a novel that was written about somebody who lived in the 1900s who was a climber, right? And that's what makes it so sincere. It's an extrapolation from reality. That's what makes it sincere. When we look at Gregory, right? We look at Gregory's work. This is an extrapolation. Well, not so much hardcore from reality, but the somberness of his soul, right? I know Greg and he's been through a lot. He's been through a lot, but I'll explain why he does the things he does. He does extrapolate from reality, but then he hides it in a way or uh, puts a pretty overlay layer on top of it to somewhat disguise the somberness, right? And when it comes to Maxwell, it's the same thing. He extrapolates from reality. And by the way, this guy's only 18 years old. He's only 18 years old, um, and so I wonder when there are grown men who are 30, 35, and still don't know what the F they're doing with their lives, nigga, how dare you? You piece of trash, right? Just like in Diddy Mark's case, I don't know how old he is. I think he's 23 or 22 now, and his stuff is extremely insincere. He extrapolates from other popular IPs and everything's about the dopamine rush, relying on hardcore visuals and demons and scare tactics like this in order to give you some sort of feeling. But the feeling is so disposable. Do you see? Didi Mark, better artist than Greg or Max, but it doesn't matter. Because he's not extrapolating from reality. It's insincere and thus loses meaning. It's meaningless. It's toilet paper. Legit toilet paper. Right? Let's go back. Genuine emotion from ancient myths and legends to classic literature to television and cinema. Sincerity has been the core element that binds the audience to the narrative. It's the fundamental ingredient that binds the audience to the narrative. You cannot bind the audience to your narrative if there's a lack of sincerity. If you don't mean what you mean, you don't mean what you're saying, right? Or what you're trying to say, the people will feel it. People might not be able to articulate it and say, you know, one, two, and three, this is why, yada, 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 but they sure as heck can feel. And this is exactly the case with white manga. People are not bound to apple sack because it's insincere. It's diverse. It's just a diversity product. It's a vehicle to push the propaganda of cultural Marxism. That's why nobody's buying it. 500,000 subscribers, my ass, right? It's a bunch of bots and the people who even made videos when White lost his channel, none of them bought his book. Because there's nothing binding the human soul, the human experience to the narrative because the narrative 
is a fabrication. It is nothing but a uh, goalpost just to be used in order to share the propaganda and indoctrinate people. I mean, this is common sense, but I guess not so. ...that allows us to resonate so deeply with stories. Sincerity is what makes characters relatable, struggles compelling... See what I'm talking about? Sincerity is what makes characters relatable. Stories compelling. Ain't not a damn thing that's relatable here or compelling. Not a damn thing. But by just looking at Max's stuff, somehow I feel like I relate to these characters. I feel something. I feel drawn. Why? I feel drawn to the somberness and I know the somberness must be that these characters have been through something along with Gregory's stuff as well along with this manga the climber okay along with this along with this look at this scene here this panel right this page look at it feel it immerse yourself in it all right you done? Okay, let's go back to anything that is of Didi Mark. Do you feel the same way? Not at all. There is nothing here that can make you feel what you feel here. Not one thing, but here there is. Here there is also, right? and triumphs uplifting. Now look, I'm not saying that every story has to be this serious thing which dramatically changes our lives. There is absolutely a place for humor, for irony, for stories that don't take themselves too seriously, for movies which- There is a place for it, but people should be honest in what they are producing. You see, they have to be honest, like, okay, I'm in the comedy genre, bro. I'm just making comedy. Okay, cool, then we'll judge it as a comedy, right? But people don't even know what they are creating anymore. They are just creating. You don't know what genre you're actually falling under in. And that's one of the problems, is that everything is being blurred into each other. Which know they are movies and have fun with that premise. In fact, this kind of storytelling can be incredibly refreshing and entertaining when done right. However, when this becomes the default, when every film in the cinema feels the need to follow trend by shying away from earnest emotions or genuine stakes. A lot of problems tend to arise. Problems which films with a more sincere approach would just never run into. First of all, that amazing thrill of having your expectations subverted, that rush of excitement you get when a movie is meta, self-aware, ironic. Well, <laughs> it has extremely diminishing returns. Like I said earlier, Everyone in the movie theater laughed back in 2012 when Hulk picked up Loki and threw him around like a ragdoll. But I imagine if you watched that scene today, it just wouldn't be that funny. But why? Well, first of all, the joke has been done a million times since, in both every Marvel movie and basically everywhere else. But on top of this, every single one of these self-referential jokes are essentially the same, just with slightly different coats of paint. Like, sure, you can subvert expectations, break the fourth wall, play on pre-established tropes in as many different ways as you like. But let's face it, the joke is pretty much this. Hey, you're watching a film, and we know it. Like that- Exactly. That's- that's the main problem. That's it. <laughs> that's the whole joke, done over and over and over again. And a huge problem with this formula, other than it becoming stale very quickly due to ridiculous overexposure, and it not being that clever or funny here. in the first place, to a piece of art. So what is the solution to all of this? Because like I've already said, it's not that I think that this meta sort of humour doesn't have any place in modern cinema. Well, I have a few ideas. First of all, I don't really think movies can have their cake and eat it too when it comes to this stuff. Like, I find it so bizarre when the Deadpool movies, for example, which let's be honest, essentially exist to make fun of superhero films, to break the fourth wall, and to have- Exactly, a lot of things are being done to just make fun of the old ways. You know, when the post-modernism movement came, they were making fun of the standards of old, like the urinal, right? How somebody took a urinal and took a photo of it and said, this is a piece of art. How somebody took a dump in a can and said, this is a piece of art. They're making fun 
of all the standards of old, of all the things, of all the sincerities, of all the things that meant something, right? They're making fun of it. They're trying to destroy it and create a world of zero meaning. And a world of zero meaning is a world of nihilism. Hey guys, if you want to see the full video and its context, consider joining my Patreon. That's where the real caffeine is at. Cheers.